Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. This week we're gonna do an overview look for beginners, Fusion 360. I got a comment on YouTube asking if I could do sort of a quick, and not quick, this isn't gonna be quick. <laughs> Nothing's quick. It's gonna be like a uh, an overview of, of Fusion 360. This is gonna be good for beginners if, you're, if you wanna um, start getting into Fusion 360. If you're thinking, if you're on the fence and, and, and you're thinking about Fusion 360, um, this, hopefully this video helps you out. I of course started with one, two, three D design. Um, my, I've done a lot of projects in it and I sort of outgrown it. My, my project started getting bigger in terms of just components. So I found myself working a lot more extra harder, uh, to hide layers, to hide solids, um, specifically with like any Raspberry Pi projects, I would have a ton of components and it took forever to just hide things. It started slowing down. So I heard about Fusion 360 and the main thing that really attracted me was that I was able to have the layers. It was uh, a lot more manageable uh, in terms of solids and components and things. And, and, and so far I've been using it for several months and now it's just way more powerful than I ever need. And hopefully uh, we can, we can uh, work together uh, on on learning the UI and things. So the, the specific answer talked about some of these icons aren't here. So when you first open this up, there's nothing here. You get a grid, you get your cube that looks the same. And some of these icons look similar uh, like you would see them in Fusion 360. So let's go look at this first. We have create. These are all the things that you can create. You can create extrudes, you can create primitives, a bunch of different things. And if you roll over to the side here, you're going to see this little icon. It says a little tooltip. There's everything has a tooltip. So if you don't know, just, I think, roll over it and it'll tell you a tooltip, right? So that's what it does, right? Coil, does a coil, does a pipe, all sorts of different things. So again, if you want to add it to the toolbar, just click on that thing. And then if you click on the X, it'll get rid of it. So I've just customized this to really reflect how, you know, quick. And I actually don't use these that much anymore that much. I'm using right click a lot because you can access all these things from right clicking and you can access the right click anywhere you are. So that's really nice. I, I'm getting used to that too, but you're probably going to want to use these up here at the front. So I just have a bunch of stuff. So I have press and pull. I don't use it that much. I use it in pinch. I use shell in the very beginning of enclosure designs. I use scale, not that much either. So why are they even there, right? Let's get rid of those. <laughs> um, I use, um, I do use uh, chamfers and fillets all the time. You betcha. Move, yes. Split body, of course. Combine, oh yeah. So which one was it that I didn't want? Press and pull. No. Yeah, scale. I don't scale that much because I know exactly what I want things to be. Um, so yeah, we don't need scale there. Assemble, that's really awesome if you're doing mechanical stuff, stuff that moves, stuff that slides, stuff that has joints. Um, that's uh, where you want to use assemble. So I'm not doing a lot of mechanical design, so unfortunately I'm not using it that much. Sketch, I use Sketch so much now these days. All sorts of Sketch stuff, text, fillets, uh, just basic rectangles really most of the time and then adding fillets to it. Um, offset, all the time if you want to offset something. I use that a lot for tolerancing, for making portholes. Um, I use sketch dimensions a lot. I use the rectangle tool, of course, a lot. Construct, this is to make planes, like construction planes. Uh, so you can use them as a reference to cut things out or to extrude things. I use those in a pinch. Inspect, I use measure all the time to measure uh, stuff. I'm using section allows this uh, quite a bit now too, to be able to cut through designs and see in there and see if there's clearance and stuff like that. Insert, if you want to add, um, this is awesome, if you want to add, um, Come on, what's it called? The artwork, if you want to add a reference material, if you want to like trace something out, definitely use that. I use S Insert SVG a lot too. If you want to have custom graphics, custom logos and stuff, definitely use Insert SVG. Um, and Make, uh, I don't use that that much. I just export my STL and import it, but you can. it's nice that they have that now. And uh, there's scripts and stuff too. And then Select lets you uh, choose different selection types, free or window or a paint select. I, I normally keep it at select, but you know, you can, you can obviously change it. So let's talk about the model or no. So that's all these tools. It's all a part of this thing called workspace. So if you click on this model box, you can see different workspaces. So this is where like, this is way more powerful than I ever need. They have patch, which is like, if you want to create a, a lot of advanced surface modeling, surface patches, I really don't use it that much. I'm not that advanced or whatever. Rendering, if you want to render out your design, I just print stuff. So I don't really render stuff out. 
Um, animation is awesome if you want to have if, if you're doing mechanical parts that's a big deal simulation if you have uh simulation if you have like you want to test weak points or airflow or something like that that's huge i i hardly need that cam i had 3d print i i hardly do any uh cnc milling but it's there and it's incredibly powerful again I'm, you know it's very crazy stuff so i stick and model there's this other one called freeform i just clicked on that freeform button and I've only used this on like two projects. I use it on the Pit Boy project and I use it on the Purple People Eater project. It lets you make sculpting stuff so you can pull faces and stuff like that. Very, very cool. Uh, organic designs. It only shows up when you click on this create form button. So that's one thing to look out for. See, it's, it's gone. Now it's gone. But anyway, model, that's where you want to stick. Next thing, let's take a look at uh, these icons here. So you can, you save, you have your undo stuff <laughs> you know there's basic save file new design um that's pretty much it save save as export same you know basic stuff so data panel this is where all your projects are going to live so by default i think you get this my first project i have a couple things in there and i start making new projects with so my pip boys in there pie girl too let's take a look at that let's take a look at this so this is a master assembly so inside this folder, I have a bunch of um, components. I have every component that makes up this master assembly. There's nothing special about it. It's just that it's a normal design, but there's stuff linked into it. So if you look in the browser, you can see all the components that are linked. So they're not editable. They're just linked. They're just referenced in this design. So if I click on the Raspberry Pi 2 component file, design file, you can see that it's, that it's just that. So let's take a look at the browser now. So inside the browser, you get this name view. So you can click on different views. That's just another way to use uh, the navigation cube. So I, I tend to use navigation cube a, a bit more than name views, but it's there. Units, uh, I always stick with, with millimeters. You can change it if you want, but I don't recommend that. Um, origin, origin is this thing that they're just planes, right? They're just basic planes that show up. You have your center point. Um, you just use it as a, I use it as a reference really. So I don't do much there. Bodies, this is where all your solids are gonna live, right? If you make a primitive or if you extrude stuff from a solid, in this case, it's the, it's the Raspberry Pi 2, then yeah, you get you get this thing. You, you get bodies, things inside of bodies. If you have a bunch of bodies, you can start grouping them in other folders. So if you right click on it, you get all this different stuff. Here's how you export a single thing as a single body as an STL, if I want to export that and do it that way. You can delete it, remove it, or hide it. Or you can uh, change the appearance, the materials, it's all fancy stuff. Um, and then of course right here, create components from a body. That is actually going to make it a folder. Nothing fancy other than just putting it inside of a folder. So that's cool. I use that a lot too. Uh, sketches, this is where all your sketches automatically, it's gonna be moved and organize things for you. So that's good. So that's where all your sketches are. So to make that PCB, I actually use the sketch. So when you look at the sketch, you just get a reference idea of the overall sketch. When you wanna see what all the dimensions are for features inside of a sketch, all you gotta do is double click on it and then you'll see all the stuff that I've done. Definitely check out my uh, building a, a circuit board template mount. Uh, tutorial, I'll have it linked either here or here. It's gonna be a card so you can click on it. And that goes uh, how to make, that goes through how to make a, um, how to use sketch dimensions, how to use sketches in general. Also, um, I. I I definitely recommend checking out Tyler Steen's video. I'm going to have that link to that shows you how to, uh, from scratch, build and design a Arduino enclosure from scratch using sketches. Definitely awesome. Definitely recommend Taylor Steen. We actually um, talked a little bit here, here and forth and, colla and, cal and collaborated on the uh, Bluetooth slider project. So thank you, Taylor, <laughs> on that one. Um, but this is huge. So all these features are editable parametric i can change all these dimensions and stuff and this looks a lot like a pcb tech drawing so i you can look you can reference a pcb um tech drawing like the raspberry pi and follow their measurements and then just sort of draw things out so that's a huge thing so that is awesome um, i use sketches so much these days guys like i i never use prim uh, primitives here these are all primitives i never use those anymore everything is driven by drawing a sketch so the next thing I want to talk about, so we got the um, these things 
uh, talked about. Let me let me talk a little bit more about the browser, I guess. Um, one great thing is that you can like shift, you click on one thing, and if you hold down shift and then click on another thing, it'll, it'll kind of uh, make a whole selection of things. So now you can hide all these things. So if you wanted to just show um, just the enclosure, you can do it that way and you can quickly show everything again by doing it show and hide button again. So there you go. Or if you wanted to copy and paste objects, I can come in here, hit copy, and then over here I would hit paste, and then I would duplicate that. But I don't want to do it in this case. But there you go. Um, that's pretty much the browser. Every component has uh, bodies within it. Um, these are obviously linked. If you want to link stuff inside of a uh, another design, you can right click on it here. And in your in your data panel, and then just say insert into current design, and I'll in, insert it as a reference. And if you wanted to modify things outside of your original, you can here, you can click on right click on that and say break link, or you can even choose the version. Crazy stuff. So okay, that's a basic look at that. The next thing I want to talk about is let's 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 uh hide that and hide and show this again. Show the main body for the Raspberry Pi two. This is just one solid, right? But the cool thing about this is that if you look down here, this is your parametric timeline. And the parametric timeline is your friend. It is always keeping track of all the features that you make in your design. So if you double click on one of these, you can actually modify it. So here is the dimension that I added for extruding, 2.25. So I can come in here and still modify this, make it bigger if I wanted to, hit OK. Uh, they have direction, so I can make it uh, Two, I can extrude it from the bottom outside of the uh, thing. I can make it symmetrical if I wanted to. I can add a flare thing if I wanted to flare it out. And that's all editable here. You can mess with the manipulator or you can mess with the edit feature panel thing. So that's awesome. So that is, so one thing that I really recommend is that as you start uh, using the parametric timeline, you're, the goal is to make as minimal, as little operations as possible. The less you have, the more manageable it becomes. And then you can come here and modify stuff. So I wanted to, if I wanted to edit the um, the fillets, I can hold down uh, control to see all the lines and like deselect some th stuff. And then you can say I only have those two selected. I can increase it here. Well, too much, gave it an error there. But I can increase it here, hit OK hit cancel in this case and it, it it all carries things over to the to the front so this thing here this little black bar here with the arrow that is your playhead so you can scrub through the timeline and see um how you built this thing so you can um, use these arrows too to step through it but you can see how in series how i built this together and you can always reference back to it. You can even move things around. I've started to move things around. In this particular design, it doesn't matter where this part is, but I found it where I've if I move something in further in time, it'll it'll help out the feature on that's in a particular project. You obviously can't move it to the very beginning because you have to have an extrude. The very first thing I did was an extrude the board. And you can see I didn't even have to make the holes. I just didn't select uh, the whole part, but if I wanted to select it, I just select it there. Now, now, now it uh, covers it. Okay, one more thing, tip about the parametric timeline. So the parametric timeline, if you look at these different designs, they all have a different. They have a different timeline because there's different features that are being made in them. And the one goal that I recommend trying to do is to use as minimal as little steps as possible. So instead of having to pile a bunch of features. A bunch of tweaks just double click on something and modify that like don't keep adding a bunch of stuff to it because at some point you're gonna get so many that you're gonna have a hard time managing them I I, I, that, I did that with the pip boy it kind of happened here with the with the Raspberry Pi uh, 2 game girl but I, I'm still able to manage it I can I did a lot of different features but I can still manage it and make sense of it all um, so that's one tip is to just really utilize uh, being able to edit an, an existing feature instead of just piling a bunch of tweaks on top of it. That's why I actually don't use the press pull feature because when you use that and you tweak this, um, if you hit a new offset, it'll actually make a new thing. And you can even delete these. So that's really cool. So you can just delete that and keep it nice and trim. So that's really the tip there is to just use as many, as, as little, uh, 
as little operations as possible so that your design is elegant, clean, and manageable. So I think that's about it for the parametric timeline. So there you go. Um, that's a quick look at the parametric timeline, um, a quick look at the browser, a quick look at all the tools up here. It, again, it's just sort of a, a really quick crash course. Um, if you want to, you know, the one thing that really locked me up for a while was just moving around in the environment, just moving around. I did a little tutorial already. It's called pan tilt or pan zoom in orbit, I think. Um, where it just talks about using the middle mouse button to do everything. So scrolling your mouse wheel, zooms, holding down shift and clicking the middle mouse button. That orbits, if you let go of the shift key and click and drag, then you're panning. So really get used to doing the three things. So zoom, pan, and orbit. So get used to that. Definitely get used to that. And then when you go back, if you ever go back to 123Design, it, it, it actually carries through the same hold down shift and middle mouse button to do everything. Right click was the hardest thing to get to get uh, out of the habit of right clicking to orbit. I'm always like, ah, uh, you know. So this helps you, uh, this is just a quick menu to do, to access a bunch of, to access basically every function feature inside of Fusion. So that's what the right click does. I use it um, quite a bit now, but that's it. I think that is it guys. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little overview. Um, I don't know if I talked about this yet, but I did want to say, should you switch from Autodesk Fusion or from 123 Design to Fusion? I would say if you are making one part that has a bunch of features, you're you're okay in 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 123 Design because you don't need, I guess, to hide a lot of layers. If you're finding yourself hiding things a lot, if you're finding yourself, uh, you know, slow um, or editing a feature, editing like tolerances a lot. I highly recommend Fusion 360. It, it really is going to help you out a lot. Um, it, it really does. I, I, can't, I look back at all these bigger projects like the Pi Girl and just general projects that have a, more than five components. It's like, how did you ever work in there? <laughs> so 123 is great for single parts, single mounts, and things like that. I definitely recommend it still, but um, um, I, I can't recommend Fusion 360 more. So I think that's it, guys. If you have any... Uh, specific features that you'd like me to check out, I definitely encourage you guys to, 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 to ask me down below in the comments. Somebody asked me about threads and I learned how to use threads and then I made a twist top thing and now I really like using threads. So uh, it's like a nice little feedback you guys ask and then I, I learn it and then I teach you about it. So that's really fun. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for of course commenting and things, but um, I think that's it. Again, if you have anything that you'd like to know, your your even just a, a nice little hey this is a good tour i love those comments they encourage me to do more i obviously started by doing just like one every month then you know uh one every every two weeks and now i'm really encouraged to do one every week so thank you guys for all the encouragement um that's about it um check out fusion 360 it is a free app if you're um um if your company or whatever makes like $100,000 or less, it, you get it for free. It's, it's free for educational purposes as well. A lot of, they had like this trial version thing that confused a lot of people that they thought you would have to start paying after a certain amount. But nope, it's, it's still free for me and a lot of other folks too. So there you have it. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, until the next one, you know, remember to keep on making. Bye, guys.